What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. So we are back once again with a five year new look rebuild as today we are back in the Eastern Conference. And today we have the Toronto Raptors who are in a little bit of a like retool slash rebuild. They obviously just traded Pascal Siakam and OG Nanobi away. Scotty Barnes seems to be the guy they're building around. So let's just go ahead and jump in and do this five year new look Toronto Raptors rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you're new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We're currently on the road to 50,000 subs. If you want to help me reach that goal, that would be absolutely amazing. Now, I will tell you, I'm recording this on August 3rd, which is a Saturday, and you won't be seeing this video till Monday. I'm going out of town for a couple of days, uh, just getting a video out to you guys. That way, you guys have something to watch on Monday while I am gone, just going to Kansas City for a little bit of a getaway, just a little bit of a uh, vacation, I guess, as you can say. But the last two videos have been rough, man. Uh, I'm a little bit in a championship rut right now. It just hasn't been going my way. The Knicks video was a disaster. The Grizzlies video didn't go much better. So now you might not be seeing this till Monday, but I'm determined today to turn my luck around. We got to get at least one championship today. We got to do at least one time, man. So they already kind of have a nice little big three, you know, mid three, whatever you want to call it. Although I think this team could develop into something special potentially. RJ Bay, and then quickly, Scotty Barnes, of course, is a nice little start. Still have Yaka Perto as well, Kelly Linick and uh, Grady Dick. So to me, the Raptors are a little bit of a like, uh, I don't know. They like want to be competitive, but also are kind of somewhat young as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team could do next year. Now, we do have Bruce Brown's expiring contract. We'll probably more than likely move that at the deadline. I'm also going to move Oshai Abaji to small forward because he's at power forward for some reason right now. So we're going to move him to small forward. So this is what it's going to kind of look like. So obviously, they just got Davion Mitchell. They had Sasha Vinsikov, or I guess I still have him on the damn roster. What am I doing? Pretty sure he gave up his full salary to get bought out, by the way. So we're going to go ahead and lower his contract all the way because he really just wanted to go back uh, to overseas. And I think he's already done that. So we're going to make sure... He's as cheap as possible. That way, 2K doesn't stretch his contract on me and we can buy him out. I don't know why I haven't updated this, man. That's my fault. So, um, which I guess that leads me to, if you're looking for a share scenario, I do have one. As you can see, it's not totally updated. I need to fix a few things. But if you want to look for a share scenario on Xbox, uh, I believe it works on PS5 as well. Some people have told me. So just search up uh, that gamer tag under Crushables. All right, enough talk. Let's just get into next season and let's see what we're about to look like. So let's just get straight into the rotation. And we can start talking about things there more. Bro, I just realized I still have John T. Port on the Toronto Raptors as well, man. I got a few things, few small things I need to fix, but whatever. Uh, probably doesn't entice you to download my share snare with uh, those little few problems. But regardless, let's get in the rotation. So we got Manu Quickly, Bruce Brown, RJ Barrett, Barnes, and Yaka Portal. All that looks pretty good to me. Grady Dick uh, is a backup. You got Kelly Linick, Oshai Abadji, Davion Mitchell, and Chris Boucher, and Jacoby Walter. So... I really like it. I didn't really talk about what they obviously added this offseason. They, you know, obviously added Jacoby Walter, Chom Chi. Uh, they got Jamal Sheed, I think, as well. Mogbo. So they had a pretty solid draft. So we're going to go ahead and send a couple of these guys at the G League. So we'll send Chom Chi down there and we'll send, uh, I guess we could send Mogbo there as well. So we'll probably do something like that and we'll give Jacoby Walter minutes this year. So I guess we'll be running an 11 man rotation. That way he gets to play a little bit. All right. We're going to go ahead and send my year number one. More than likely, I am going to stop at the deadline. To me, in my opinion, the the first most perfect season would be if we somehow were a good team and we ended up as maybe like a uh, lottery team. That would be beautiful stuff because then we might be able to add Cooper Flag. I imagine if I move Scotty Barnes shot tendency up, which I probably should, even though this is probably going to make us better. So maybe I should just ignore shot tendency right now. But I mean, the man is going to take a lot of shots as the number one option. So we're going to send him, uh, send a shot tendency up. But let's simulate year one. Let's see how it goes. More than likely. As I was just going to say, I'm probably going to stop at the deadline to trade Bruce Brown because I think more than likely the Raptors will probably do that considering he's an expiring contract. And I think there's a few continuing teams that might want his services. Today's video is brought to you by two softwares designed to help you beat the sports books and become a much profitable sports better. And we're starting on Daily Grind Fantasy's Optimizer. So if you're playing on Price Picks, Underdog, or any of those popular DFS apps, having a tool like this is insanely clutch. As you can see, since I'm recording this, you know, early on Saturday, there's a ton of value on the board. Uh, let's take a look at this one, for example. Jack Flirty over six and a half strikeouts. I found this play within two seconds, just like that. It's on the board for me. But the reason why we like it is, as you can see, every single book is favoring for him to go heavily over his strikeout line, which is why we like this on prize picks. And then if you take a look at another example, so not only does it show you like the juice on every sports book, it also shows you discrepancies, as you can see on this CS2 play. Other 30 and a half on price picks, and you have so many other apps at 29 and a half, 20 and a half, and then 30 and a half, but heavily favoring for him to go under. So 28 and a half, it would make no sense for us to go, hey, let's go to hot streak and bet the under 
point and a half on um, hot streak when you can get a much better price on prize picks, which is why having a tool like this is so insanely clutch. Another tool I absolutely love is Odds Jam's positive EV tool. So if you take a look at this one, I actually went ahead and played this already, but minus 115 on DJ Hurst under four and a half player hits allowed. As you can see, minus one uh, average odds of minus 138, but we're getting the best possible price on Fliff. So basically minus 115 while every other book has it. Minus 135, minus 150, minus 130. It's just simply line shopping, man. It's it's as simple as that. If you line shop, you'll become a much profitable sports better. This also has a fancy fantasy optimizer, and then uh, DGF has an AI slip generator. So they actually build the slips for you, and you just like plug and play them. I will tell you, this one's a little bit more pricey, but it is up 1,400 units since August 18th. So yeah, if you're like too lazy and don't want to build out your own slips, you just want like an AI slip generator to do it for you. Like you literally just go bet on price picks and it literally just plugs and plays it for you. That's only available in price picks right now, but it's insanely cool. I, I can't lie. It's a really cool tool, but kind of pricey. Uh, but if you want to check out any of these, to, uh, check, check the link in the description below. Use code CRUSTFULS, 25% off your first month on each uh, platform. Odds Jam, I think is actually 15, my fault. 50% on Odds Jam and then 25% off on DGF. Make sure to check them out. Links down in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So we are starting the trade deadline as promised, and I am going to be trading Bruce Brown. So we're trading Bruce Brown, Mogbo, and a second round pick in order to get that 2029 unprotected Miami pick. We get Duncan Robinson's contract in return, uh, but it'll be expiring next year. I believe we could just decline it. I think it's non-guaranteed, but ultimately we're getting a first round pick for Bruce Brown as we wanted to. This is going to free up minutes for Grady Dick, which is also awesome. And Bruce Brown isn't doing anything too crazy this season anyway. Now I will tell you, we're actually pretty good. 29 and 22 on the season right now. So things are going fairly well. But we can move Grady Dick now to shooting guard, and he's going to start for us. So it'll be Grady Dick as a starter. So yeah, so that boom, we gave Grady Dick minutes and obviously a really good shooter. So he should space the floor. Only shooting 35% this year, though. So hopefully that improves here soon. But he's averaging 12. So it's kind of cool to give him some opportunity. But like I said, we might be a playoff team this year, 29 and 22. But I still wanted to trade, uh, trade Bruce Brown regardless. But that's the only move we were going to do. Uh, we got a first round pick for Bruce Brown. So mission accomplished. But let's see how the rest of the season goes without him. So Luka wins MVP as usual. Do I even need to show that? I've been saying that in the videos quite often. He just always wins them. I don't think Scotty Barnes made an All-NBA team, but he might at one point in this video. So let's just take a look. So yeah, no All-NBA team for him just yet. But we did end up as a play-in team, which is kind of nice. We're the 10th seed in the Eastern Conference. So I guess it's cool that we're competitive right now. Uh, but 21 from Scotty Barnes, uh, 18 from Quickly, 15 from RJ Barrett, 12 from Cody Olenek, and then 10 from Grady Dick. Nine from Jacoperto with eight rebounds, and then seven from Moshe Abaji, seven from Robinson, and then six from Boucher, five from De'Ami Mitchell, and then four from Jacoby Walter. So not too shabby, but I'm more than okay if we get bounced here. I would rather be a lottery team this year anyway, to be completely honest with you. Um, but we'll see what happens. Do we beat the Magic and we lose? Okay, that's fine. We go be a lottery team. That's totally fine. We get to add a lottery pick to this roster. I think that's probably the best way to go about things anyway right now, so... More than okay with that. Knicks and Nuggets in the finals, and Knicks go on to win the championship. Why couldn't I have done that the other day when I was using the Knicks? I don't know. Regardless, uh, LeBron James is going to retire, uh, which is fine. But let's get straight to the lottery. So, of course, first important step here. So, our pick is projected like 13, which isn't great. So, we have a 1% chance of jumping up. Imagine. Just imagine that it happens. Let's let's watch. Since we're only 13, maybe we get lucky. We jump up to top four. That would be freaking crazy. Magic got 14, so they got eliminated as well. Come on. We need some luck. 13 goes to another team. No, damn. Okay, so we aren't, we're not going to get that lucky. Although, like I said, this draft class is still insanely good. And I believe we have a Pacers pick in this draft, or maybe it's next year. So next year we have a Pacers pick. But overall, I'm very happy with having a lottery pick in this offseason. Of course, I'd rather be a top four, but I will take it regardless. I mean, if we could have added an Ace Bailey or a Cooper Flag, we'd really be chilling. But you know what? It's cool. We got to play in year one. Now we have a lottery picks. We got a little bit of, uh, I guess, postseason experience. And now we can see what we need to do next. So 13. And then we got a bunch of future draft picks, which is nice. Is there anybody I'm like wanting to offload here? We'll probably just wait till after the draft to figure that out. So let's just see what we get. So number one, Cooper Flag is pairing with Wimby. So that's going to be a little bit of a scary duo. Ace Bailey to Washington is also insanely good for them. Ian Jackson, Colin Murray's going. You got Michael going. You got uh, VJ Edgecombe going. Uh, Visage goes, Liam goes, what else we got? Noah's going, okay. So we're about to pick here in just a second. Nolan goes, Jalel goes, and then uh, Dylan Harper goes. Man, uh, if he would have been on the board, I would have had a really interesting decision to make there. Probably would have had to have taken him. But I think today we are going to take Hugo Gonzalez and not look back. I mean, Hugo can be an absolute beast in 2K and uh, we could definitely use that. Like I said, all we're all 
We're doing everything we can. No holes barred. We are going to win a championship today. I'm in a huge rut. I'm looking to get out of it. So Robinson, I'm going to decline, obviously. I'll accept Jamal Shedd or Sheed, however you say it. And then uh, Davion Mitchell, probably bring him back because he actually develops pretty well in 2K or he used to anyway. Uh, free agency. We got Davion Mitchell. So yeah, Davion Mitchell is like the only one I'm really concerned about. So let's take a look. So we got quickly as a starting point guard. Fine. Grady Dick, Hugo, which is nice. Uh, we got RJ Barrett, Oshai Baji, Scotty Barnes, and then Jakob Pertl is our starting center at this very moment. I'd be fine with moving off Jakob Pertl, to be honest with you. He's 29 years old, but there's like, I don't know. We could keep him. We could trade him. There's a lot of different ways we can go about this. Olenek is someone I do want to move, though, just because him being 34, he's going to regress. Let's just see what we can get for him right now. I'd be fine with a protected first, a second round pick. So the Bucks want to give me a uh, first round pick, but I don't even think they could do this. They're probably in the second apron anyway. Uh, Jalen Smith was being offered to me, Derek Jones Jr. So Memphis wants to give me a first round pick and John Conchar. I like this trade. I'm just not sure Olenek's like worth a unprotected first. Like that sounds kind of insane. Utah doesn't make any sense. I think Olenek was in Utah for a second as well. Yeah, so that doesn't make sense for him to go back there. Olivier Maximus Prosper is interesting. Like I said, if when it comes to Olenek, I would imagine he's worth at least a protected first, but I can't say he's worth an unprotected first round pick. So I kind of like the Grizzlies offer. It kind of makes sense for them to maybe want Olenek, but I feel like to make it a little bit more realistic, it's got to be like an unprotected first. I feel like that makes a lot more sense. Kind of, can we protect it? Yes, we can. So I think a lot of protected first is more than fair and they want a second, whatever. They're going to give me a second. So a lot of protected first for Olenek. I will absolutely take that. So we get him off the books and we get a first round pick and uh, return. Now we did take John Kachar's contract, but maybe that contract becomes, you know, valuable, not valuable, but like another salary we could fill in a trade later on. So I'm not too concerned about it. All right. So Hugo and Grady Dix are shooting our rotation. Jacoby Waltz is going to fit in there somewhere. Uh, RJ Barrett, Oshai Baji is looking good. And then we don't really have a backup five currently. And then we're going to bring back Davion Mitchell. So uh, let's just go to resign Davion Mitchell because we're 100% doing that. So I'm going to give him a nice five-year deal. We lock him up to be our backup point guard throughout the video. I don't mind that at all. Backup five, we can go get Drummond. We can go get Daron Sharp. So a lot of good options here. I think I'm going to offer Daron Sharp a contract. He may, ooh, this guy is also down here. He develops really nicely in 2K. I mean, I think we got to go for him, right? I don't know why he's here, but welcome to the team, uh, Mr. Maluk, or however you say your damn name. Welcome. I'll take you. So boom, we'll do that. Get ourselves a really nice backup center who develops really nicely. Like I said, we're pulling out all the stops today. It does not matter what we do. We're going to go win a championship if it's the last thing I do in this video. We only got five years to do it, but man, I got to get it done. So Barnes is up, quickly is up. Uh, Davion Mitchell, like I said, progresses, and he did. Jacoby Walter, 77. So all that's looking fantastic. Pirtle is also up. So if there was anything I might do at the deadline, it's to upgrade that five spot. Yaka Pirtle salary, of course, one year deal left on it. So if there's like a center that we can upgrade to, I think we got to potentially try it. It just all depends on who's available, of course. But I'm excited for year two. We made the plan last year. I imagine with adding Hugo to this roster and potentially being able to upgrade at the deadline, that's only going to make us even better. So Pirates going to line at 16th overall. Proficiency is three and a half under Darko still. So we'll leave that the way it is. All right, so let's take a look. So rotationally, quickly, Grady Dick, RJ, Barnes, Pirtle. Davion Mitchell, Oshai Baji, Hugo, Jacoby Walter, and then, yes, that all looks good. Chomchi's even de developed really nicely, but um, I don't want bench utilization being this much. I didn't realize it was this much last year, so we'll do something along the lines of that, and we'll see how it goes. So Chomchi, I guess, is getting kicked to the road, although we could have maybe just let him be the backup center this year and not sign Mr. Kayla here, but whatever. It's all good. Let's go ahead, semi to the end of this season, and uh, let's see if we have... A good season or not we had a solid season last year let's see if we can do even better so we're at the trade deadline as we are 29 and 22 on the season and i kind of have a target in mind that i want to go ahead and go for so this guy's also been in some trade rumors as well uh he's making dirt cheap money right now now he does like to get paid a ton of money which is the only problem with doing this uh but we'll try our best to make him as cheap as possible and that is walker kessler they are selling they've tried to trade him anyway and I think he's kind of like the perfect mold. He's like right on our timeline along with Barnes, RJ, quickly at 24 years old. Like I said, he's going to have to get paid this offseason and usually ask for a ton of money. But I still think getting him right now would really help this roster out a ton. He's averaging, let's see. So he's averaging. And I know we have Yaka Pertle, but having two of these guys would be awesome. 11 and 12. I mean, three blocks a game. It's like kind of the perfect guy we kind of need right now. So I'm going to see if I can find a way to pull this off. So. Maybe we throw Jacoby Walter in here because, like, technically we have Grady Dick and Hugo that I kind of like more anyway. So let's say we start the trade with Jacoby Walter. We trade this Grizzlies first-round pick as well that's lot protected. 
What do they say to that? They agree. Just like that, all it took was a lot protected first. We get Walker Kessler. We trade Jacoby Walter to do it. And now we still have Yaka Perto as well, which still makes our center rotation really good. But since we did pay Mr. Kayla and we know he's going to develop, maybe this off, maybe we run Yaka Perto still for now, just to see if maybe we can like sneak a championship this year. And then maybe we eventually trade or trade Yaka Perto in the offseason. Now he does have a player option. I'm not really sure if he's going to accept that or not. Um, and it, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if he does. So like we could trade him right now, get some value, or we could just try to see if we can make a deep playoff run. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards is just running it with him right now. Uh, just because that gives us a really good back of five for this season. And we can leave Kayla out of the rotation completely, uh, I guess, for now. Or we can just run a 10 rotation to keep playing him. That way he continues to develop. So, yeah, we should probably do it that way. So, let's do that. And then the playoffs, we're probably just running a 9 rotation. But I'm going to run it. 29-22 on the season. We got Walker Kessler. He's going to be owed a lot of money. But uh, I think getting him in the long run is going to help out this roster tremendously. So at the end of year two, we end up as a playing team again. A little disappointed by the result. Not going to lie. I thought it'd be a little bit better, especially after adding Kessler. We only finished two games over 500. We are in the upper playing bracket, but still a little disappointed by that. But yeah, 23 from Barnes, 17 from RJ, 17 from Quickly, 11 from Hugo, and 11 from Grady Dick, and 10 and a half from Walker Kessler. But regardless, we get the uh, Nets, and we're going to run a nine rotation for the postseason. So let's do that. And let's see who can beat the Brooklyn Nets. And we do. So we do win and we are in the playoffs. So maybe we can upset Cleveland. I don't know. I feel like we could maybe push them to six at the very least. I think we could definitely give them some issues, but we'll see. So just to make sure rotation is set. So they're going to start Hugo, which I actually don't mind. We're going to start Hugo Gonzalez for these playoffs. And let's see if we can find a way to give the Cavaliers some problems. And we're down three to one. So it's not looking like we're going to give them any issues. So Hugo is going to go back to the bench and Grady Dick will get the starting spot once again. But maybe we can win another game like I said I at least want to see if we can push them the six games just give them a little bit of issues here so it's looking all right right now and it looks like we are going to push them to six games so that's huge for us nice but if we could force a game seven that'd be even better we are in Toronto in front of our home fans for this one Cleveland used to own us man it used to be Lebronto but yeah they're going to bounce us here in Toronto so embarrassing us in Toronto a little tough but it is what it is so this is only year two no problem but uh maybe this offseason we got to up the aggressiveness just a little bit we got Nuggets and Knicks again, and this time the Nuggets go on to beat them this time around. Okay. Brooke Lopez, Russell Westbrook, Harden all retiring. Let's go to the lottery. So we trade that Grizzlies pick. I think we have the Pacers pick this offseason, if I'm not mistaken. So Orlando gets one via Phoenix, and we got that 20th pick via the Pacers. So 28th pick, nice, nothing crazy. Uh, Darko, I'm going to keep around. So coaching staff is here to stay. Let's go to draft night and uh let's figure out what we're doing next so we got 28 or 17 and 28 we have our own pick of course as well uh is there anybody like that you know yak it's gonna be interesting to see what he does with this player option that's really what i'm looking at but we do have that i mean if he accepts it we could technically trade this guy and like a char's contract to maybe get something out there don't know what i'm technically looking for but uh, i don't know just a lot to try to get figured out i mean maybe we need a second star maybe rj barrett or quickly aren't the guys to continue to stick around maybe we go for somebody else to pair with Barnes like I'm not opposed to that because like we could maybe go for an upgrade at one of those spots maybe we go that route just depends on who's available of course and maybe we could find that and I think I found it to be honest with you I don't usually go for Tyrese Maxey but imagine pairing Tyrese Maxey with Scotty Barnes in this video I mean I don't think we can really go wrong with that John Moran would be cool as well but I did get him in the Rockets video if I'm not mistaken Trey Young would be interesting uh, getting like marketing, I guess would be fun. But I think out of all these, I really like the idea of going for Maxi. I really do. Now this would be Philly, obviously sucking for two years in a row, which they have done, but they are selling right now. So we got to see if we can get Tyrese Maxi on this Raptors team. Uh, so he's only 25 still, 22 points per game. He's obviously a massive upgrade. So we are going to trade away quickly to do this. So it's going to be Manu quickly to start this trade. Uh, 17. Can I throw them this guy as well? Yeah, no, I can't. So we can't do any more salary in this trade. Um, let's say we trade our 2028 unprotected. Do I have any, like, is there any young players we can throw in here? I don't want to throw Hugo if I don't have to. So we can throw six more million dollars in this trade. Okay, maybe we throw this guy in here, but we take on not Embiid. Sorry, not Embiid. Maybe we get like a cheap contract. No, they don't. I guess Nasir Cunningham is something they have. So we'll throw that in there. Uh, 28 in the draft. So quickly, two for unprotected first round picks. This guy that we got, Indiana's pick. And maybe we throw this 2029 unprotected Miami pick for Maxi. What do you say? They do agree. So we get Tyrese Maxi. I think Maxi would be worth quite a bit if he was going to be traded. So we're going to move him to uh, point guard. So he's going to be our point guard, which is nice. Maxi, welcome to Toronto. We pair him with 
Scotty Barnes and RJ. So we kind of have a nice little big three going for us there. Hugo should develop. Great Dick should develop. We have our backup point guard. So all that's looking fantastic. Now, uh, now Jakob Pertl becomes the center. I mean, or Chomchi, I guess. Depends. But we moved all of our picks out of this draft. We make the upgrade from quickly to... So Jakob Pertl declines his player options. So we got to bring him back. And then... Uh, so both our centers are free agents. So that's kind of tough. But Kessler, Abaji, and Chomchi all have qualifying offers. I mean, all three of our big men are free agents. So hopefully Pertl... So Pertl's not asking for too much. Like I said, man... This guy asked for way too much money. He's not getting anywhere near, the, near this in real life. I mean, at most, he's probably going to get what, like, Claxton got. Uh, but hey, whatever. What can you do? So, I am going to re-sign Oshaya Baji. I'm going to re-sign Yaka Pertl. I mean, we got to kind of have to at this point. So, we're going to re-sign both those guys. And I do want to re-sign Kessler. We gave up the value to get him. But we got to make sure that, like, we're giving him the best offer possible. We got to make it, you know, like, 20 million. Oh, gosh. He got an offer. I mean, we got to accept it. I don't love paying him this much money. I'm not going to lie. The ja Why did the Jazz give him an offer? You just traded him away, bro. It just makes no sense. So because of the Utah Jazz, I have to pay Kessler this much money. I was hoping to take him to day 12, make him as cheap as possible. But what can you do? We pay him like $30 million a year, which is just insane, bro. Like this man is not getting anywhere near that in real life. $42 million. Like I guess Gobert got this much money, but I think in this new CBA, Kessler's not getting anywhere near this. I could be totally wrong though. Maybe he does. I don't know. All right, so Maxi Mitchell, Brady Dick, Hugo, RJ Abaji, and then Jakoperto Kessler. So we kind of have a team that's pretty expensive, and it looks like we have enough money to sign just like one more player, and I kind of like giving that nod to Aaron Wiggins. So we'll sign Aaron Wiggins, and then Chomsky should be back on his qualifying offer for extra third-string depth. But I like it. We're going in with Maxi as the huge upgrade this year. Hugo is up to an 81, which is fantastic. Walker Kessler is up. Yeah, better be up because we just paid the hell out of you. And then Jakob Pertl, so in 83 is our backup five. Well, we're going to year three. I mean, I think at this point, we absolutely have championship aspirations. So if we can't get it done in year three, it's going to be a little disappointing. But if we can uh, win a series or two, that would also be a huge improvement compared to what we've been. But year three, I'm really hoping that we show some promise. So Paris can land his sixth overall, four-star balance, which is fantastic. And you got Maxi. Dick, RJ Barrett, Barnes, Kessler. So they still want a Hugo Hugo coming off the bench, which I guess is fine. Play Aaron Wiggins at the 10th spot and we'll run it. So Maxi shots in the T, 86, and then Barnes is up as well. So we're going to make sure these guys are taking a ton of shots. Do I want things to happen? Let's still make this season. And let's hope this Raptor te Raptors team does as good as we think it's going to. Start off 0 2, but it looks like we're getting some wins under our belt now. This man right here is just a legendary MVP throughout the entire series so far. Uh, this guy goes to Philadelphia and wins most improved players. So shout out to him. He's up to an 80 overall. So yeah, maybe I gave up on a really good five man. I know he develops really nicely, but they got a good return from Maxi. But at the end of the day, I like how we finished up the season as well, which I'll show you that in just a second. But we ended up as the second seed in the East. So we were the first seed, but it looks like we got it taken away like one of the last games of the season. But 24 from Maxi, 21 from Barnes, 16 from RJ, 16 from Hugo, 11 from Grady Dick, 9 from Jakob Perto, and then, uh, yeah, 9 and 11 from Kessler with two blocks. So all that's looking great. But now it's time to decide, can we win this, or to find out if we can win a series. So we get Brooklyn, who brought back Kyrie Irving. I can't in a million years imagine that's going to happen. But hey, you never know. Uh, let's go nine rotation and let's uh, simulate the playoffs, man. So Hugo's going to start. So many current round against Brooklyn, and we do not lose in round one. Brother, what do I got to do to have any success in 2K? What does a man have to do? I have no idea what is wrong with me so far. What has been wrong so far? But we just get absolutely swept after winning 50 freaking games during the regular season. We have no shot, no chance. And you're telling me we just get bounced disrespectfully like that by Brooklyn, who literally just brought back Kyrie freaking Irving, and that's all they did? I don't understand, man. Like, the, we didn't even get one game, bro. Not even one freaking game. Didn't even get one game on them. I I mean, I'm at a loss for words. Indiana goes on and win it all. Like, what, is, what do I got to do, bro? What do I got to do? I don't know what's going on, man. Like, I can't have any freaking luck in this game in the last three videos. And here I am. The signs are already showing that I'm going to get freaking screwed today, too. Maybe it's my own fault. We got to fire Darko. Like, we're moving on from him, no doubt. Tyron Lue, I usually have success with you. So, uh, not to rhyme there. Didn't mean to drop a bar. But we got we got to get this turnaround, man. Like, Mike Brown, come be an assistant, bro. 
Uh, no, you're not taking Frank Vogel. He was on your franchise at one point, and he don't want to come back. So, uh, give me just give me a good assistant. Like Keith, you want to come to Toronto? But Mike Brown's gonna climb off or whatever. Brian Keith's gonna do the same freaking thing. All right, give me and give me ba McLeod, I guess Barney. You know, guy that used to pick up things or whatever. All right, let's go. Bangman coach or cleanup. What was that song called? It doesn't matter. Wing Whisper. Let's uh, let's find it. And uh, I don't know, man. Like that was just so annoying. Like how do you? How do we not even get one game on that Brooklyn roster? Like that's just. That's just so insane, bro. Like, I don't even understand how we didn't get what, at least one game. Like, not even one. Uh, we have a late pick in this draft I saw. So, I mean, I don't know anything about these guys at this point. Just give me Brandon Bass. He used to play in the NBA. Like, guy named used to be named that. 72 overall. Hugo, we're accepting. Qualifying offers, Grady Dick and Chomchi. Want both those guys back. And then free agency. So, let's just make sure we resign everybody. So, RJ, I'm going to resign. Gonna resign Grady Dick as well and gonna resign Chomchi as third string depth. So sign all those guys back. I'm running it back, man. I don't care. That just seems so fluky. I'm running it back. It's my like most I mean, this team is gonna get it done. Like this, I just believe in this team. It's gonna it's gonna get it done, bro. It has to. I can't just keep bringing in pieces, rinsing, repeating, and expect I don't know, bro. I'm lost right now. Hugh goes up to an 85. So I really have to hope that him doing that. Developing that much is going to help us out. I mean, we could technically move the small forward. And he goes, he only goes up one. So nothing crazy. So yeah, I think we're fine with keeping RJ. RJ is from Toronto, I think anyway. So if we can keep him throughout the video, that'd be cool. Then we can go get Shaden Sharp, who's also from Canada. That'd be cool, I guess. But we're going into year 2028. And we're power game line of seventh overall. We have a new head coach in town. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. We're up to a four and a half proficiency. Like more, what more could I possibly do? We have Frank Vogel on the coaching staff. So like this is a damn good staff, a damn good roster. I mean, I just want, I just want a championship, bro. That's all I'm asking for. Let me get a ring. We'll see if it happens. Let's simulate to the season and uh, let's see what happens, man. Another MVP award for this guy. I mean, it's just like, what, 12 in a row or 15 in a row at this point or something like that. Uh, All-NBA first team, Luka Doncic. I can't imagine we have anybody here. We kind of have like a good roster, but hey, regular season went extremely well. Does that mean we didn't win a series? I don't know. We haven't won one in this video. This is year four. First team in the Eastern Conference, 22 from Barnes, 20, uh, 21 from Maxi, 16 from 86 Hugo Gonzalez, 15 from Grady Dick, 15 from RJ, 10 from Yakupo with a rebound. So I don't know, man. Here goes nothing. We get, let's see, if it's Brooklyn around one again, it's not. Brooklyn was on the other side. We, we do get Detroit, though, and they have Shane and Sharp and Kid Cutting up in their backcourt. And Detroit sometimes can be extremely good in 2K. Here goes nothing, man. So let me turn around against uh, Detroit, and we're going to beat them in five. It's a freaking miracle, guys. We won a series today. Okay, and now we get to play the Knicks, who, of course, are good in their own right. They've added Jalen Johnson. Uh, they got Harrington out of the draft, OG, Josh Hart. So still a very, very good team on the Knicks, but hopefully you can beat them. So many current round against New York and we are going to be down two to one. I cannot afford to go down three to one right now, bro. We got to win a freaking, we got to make it, bro. We got to go far. We have to, we don't have a choice, man. We got to even this series. We got to, we can't get bounced here, man. My luck in 2k has been just so, so bad. I need this to turn around right now. Okay. So we are going to even the series up. So we aren't going to go down uh two to one or three to one, which is good. So they want to fix things again. Hugh goes back in the starting five. Whatever you think is best, 2K. My hands are sweating like crazy because, like, I don't know, man. It feels like I can't get anything done. Can't win anything. But it looks like we're having some luck here. So we are going to go 3-2, to two, which is nice. And while I do have some cushion, I'm going to SimCast Game 6 because SimCast seems to work so far. Let's just run with it. As I said that, we give up the lead. Take it back, please. Beat them in 6. No Game 7. Okay. We're going to the Commerce Finals. 19 from Hugo. 18 from Barnes. 15 from Maxi. And now we draw the Chicago freaking Bulls, bro. The Chicago Bulls, who have Jalen Duran, Bazalis is up to an 86. I've never seen him develop that much, but that's cool. Giddy, Kobe White, Patrick Williams, Lonzo. Solid Chicago team. Not even going to lie. Let's uh, give ourselves the best rotation possible. Game one goes to us. Good start. Game two, two to zero. So far, so good. Don't let them even it up, please. All right, three to one, beat them in five. Come on. Let's go. We're in the finals, okay? This is our chance, man. We got to take advantage. We play the Thunder, probably. It is the Thunder. And, of course, the Thunder usually wreck my dream. So, they don't have Josh Giddy anymore, which is great. AJ, Wiseman, Coa Pete. So, they've been stacking up in the draft class. Toppage is a 90 overall off their bench. 
we'll give it our best try man that's all we can do so game one goes to them we lose by one game two oh we're down two to zero okay game three down three to freaking zero bro all right can we maybe make a miracle happen i doubt it but you know we'll try anyway so this is game four maybe we should have just sim casted every game against the thunder because sim cast seems to be going my way so far and we're gonna blow this aren't we no we're gonna win game four so we're not getting swept at least maybe we can maybe we can do it bro i don't know just saying it's possible game five in okc if we win this one we go to a game six in toronto which makes things just very interesting we got to win this one and it looks like they're gonna be very close on our tail and we are gonna win it okay we gotta win one more bro one more and we force a game seven come on we can do this bro we can do this we got this all right game five or game six or say in toronto this one's at home man take advantage come on blow them out just blow them out of the freaking water close game take the lead no we're not going to all right well we're just not gonna get it done at least here in year four so we got to the finals which is a great that's fantastic i'm so happy we got to the finals but at the end of the day it means nothing we didn't win so game six lose what can you do a lot of retirements here damon lawyers retiring the suns drummond and joe val very weird there but whatever all right lottery night this isn't gonna matter blazers have one staff signing i mean we got what uh tyron lose we're gonna keep that the way it is because we finally made it to the finals well uh we were close we were close what can i say that's you know close is still it doesn't matter it's not good enough so let's go to options and let's see if we can get done here so hugo can accept that uh no free agent or, or at least restricted at least not yet and then nobody so nobody's a free agent which is nice so we don't have to worry about that at least so is there anything we want to do is there any move we want to make like i guess technically in theory we could trade rj barrett and see what that would get us and we move hugo to the three like i guess we could do that so that'd be like the one thing i would do i don't want to trade him technically but if there was a trade that popped up that was pretty good maybe we go for it. so dyson daniels first round pick i mean I don't know do we want to do it rj barrett 15 last year four percent shooting from three daniels of course is going to be our starting shooting guard at that point that moves hugo to the three get a first round pick i don't hate it but do we want to do it is the question or do we just want to run it back i don't know mikhail bridges and mitch robinson's interesting not gonna lie but we don't really need another five man and i don't think this i don't know michael porter no thank you i get him too much or uh, i haven't got him in a little bit but ooh, almond thompson's interesting but barnes is kind of our ball handler right now i guess along with maxi sadiq bay i don't know like the one trade i kind of interest in i guess is the dyson daniels because what this would do in theory this would give you know maxi and barnes more scoring opportunity and daniels would just be like a three and d shooting guard now only shot 35 percent from three last year so and then hugo would have more scoring opportunity as well i think we do it i'm gonna gamble and we're gonna make a move here so hugo Dyson Daniels is going to go to the two and I thought he'd go up but he doesn't but he's still an 85 kind of what RJ was and I know Hugo will go up at the three so we'll do that so we'll run that and we'll hope that changes something will it we shall see but that's the big move we made Dyson Daniels for RJ Barrett it gives Hugo more scoring opportunity it gives Barnes Maxi so those three guys can all average 20 apiece potentially that's kind of what I'm hoping for that uh you know this will work out so player progression 88 hugo gonzalez so there's our big three all right and then we could we could even move aaron wiggins to small forward i know he'd go up if we decided to do so i think he goes up to an 83 uh 81 so we won't do it we'll just leave him at power forward all right final season final freaking chance to get out of this rut here man final chance will we do it that remains to be seen but i mean i think the team will be good in the regular season Kyrie King Land is third overall. We're a five-star freaking proficiency. A five-star proficiency. All right. 10-minute rotation. Let's run it. Let's see if we can go get it done. So finally, a new MVP goes to Women Yama this year, which is nice. But we went 65-17, and 17, coach of the year. So here is our final chance, man. First in the East. Dominated the conference all season. Here's your big three. Like I said, man, I kind of traded RJ Barrett to free up Hugo a little bit. Averages 21, 23, and then 23. So all of that's fantastic. We're going into these playoffs and let's shrink this utilization down to like 40. Let's play our starters as many minutes as possible and let's get it done. So we play the Detroit Pistons. So we beat this team last year. They now added Montez Bozelis, but you know, 
Okay, we were down 2-0 to zero at one point, and I was just ready to just run out of my room and just break something. But, hey, we're fine. Now we get the Knicks. Okay, so Harrington. They don't have Jalen. Or, no, they do. Brunson's come off the bench. Okay, very bizarre, but I respect it. Uh, Harrington's averaging 23. So, a very good team, but we beat them last year. So, we have to hope we can do it again. And we're down 2-1. to one. All right, can we even it up? Yes, we can. Can we win three straight? No, we can't. Okay, we're down 3-2. to two. We are down 3-2. to two. Game 6 in new york please win this bro please don't go home please don't get bounced here i'm out bro thank you guys so much for watching make sure you click here to watch another video that i know you'll love